And welcome to Doma Castle, the second of castles and or palaces we have since broken into. And you can see, yeah, we've uh, flooded the place quite a bit and I question the structural integrity of this place now because water can be insanely destructive. Now that was kind of the point, but we need to get in, take care of our business and get the heck out of here before we're succumb to the flood and the destruction like holy crap you always like see stuff like falling apart like right before you and i will say um i am not very fond of this dungeon and one of the reasons is the music like belzar's wall this is not appropriate music for the situation and the tension and it just absolutely just kills the atmosphere f for this. Like this, this is do or die. This is this is Doma's freedom and and everything right here. And I need to eat food some more experience. And instead, this jaunty music is playing, and it's like, no, like this is just all wrong. But at the very least, at the very least, we do have, obviously, appropriate enemies because, well, these soldiers are going to fight to the death too because they know they're screwed if they can't stop us and, spoiler alert, they're not going to. So, we can see as well that the uh, explosions um, have set fire to the place and stuff too. We notice in the background, you have, we have a gunship literally throwing fire at us. And I have to say, we, we saw it in Suino Sato as well, but I have to actually kind of like how they have enemies attacking you from afar and not everyone is just patiently waiting until you come up. Like, they can see you, they're coming after you. And as annoying as that is gameplay-wise, it it does make sense and it is a touch I kind of appreciate because you still, you know, it, it forces you to basically look beyond the borders and, and pay attention to more than just what's in front of you, you know? And I, one thing I find intriguing is that Doma Castle is not just a castle, it's apparently its own inner city in and of itself and while it's obvious it's had some Imperial upgrades. Um, the most obvious which I notice and I think is kind of hilarious but also insanely practical at the same time. Yeah, there's street lamps here. <laughs> they literally have freaking street lamps here and that is just just completely utterly just amazing to me that not only that Garlemald has such technology, or that they put it here, but more that the game devs had the foresight to be to actually put them here, and it just goes to show. Again, for as much as I rip on them for a lot of what I, what I personally feel to be poor decisions, it's it's these little touches like this that that just make everything, you know. And I wish they just put more of that kind of focus in the right places where somebody was going, you know, it, where somebody is going to notice it. Because it's just, they're great touches, but they're so underappreciated at the same time, you know? I can only assume the guy who was pilot piloting that was way deep on the inside.
Yeah, now we're ankle deep in the water too, so we need to get to the top of the keep and get the heck out of here as soon as we can. Thankfully, I'm a good swimmer. Um, Yugiria, I'm assuming you're going to be okay because you made it through the Ruby Sea and all. Uh, Hien and Gosetsu, um, I really hope you're good swimmers. Oh, great. There's more fires. Man, we are really doing a number on this place. And I have to say, I can appreciate it. I'm not sure if it, how much of it is going to actually pick up on the audio. You can still hear cannon fire going off in the background periodically here. And it's un really unclear which side it's coming from. Um, it honestly could be either. And I'm going to eat that like a schmuck. And, okay, I got aggro on something. Well, never mind then. Alright, that little embarrassment out of the way later. And, funny story. Uh, remember when I talked about a few minutes ago how I feel the music in this place is quite inappropriate? And I was running a friend, the dungeon with a friend, both of us for the first time. And he's like, this music is awesome. It sounds like something straight out of like, you know, like Mario Kart or something like that. And while I think the track in and of itself is okay, it's the environment that I find a problem with. And needless to say, the second the hexadrone showed up here, um, both of us started cracking up laughing. Even though it was a great funny moment between friends, it, it just cements how just utterly inappropriate I think the music is here. And we should not have been making such a funny in such a dire situation. You know, like you need humor and all that, but this is not the time and the place for it. I think, is this the first time we've seen a hexadrone? I can't remember if they showed up in, in Belzar's wall or not. I honestly, I don't recall where the first encounter with them is. It might be here. But even if it's not, yeah, we're going to be seeing more of them. So, it's kind of all blends in after a while. It's one thing great about this boss, and also can be really, really annoying, is that there's a nice center floor decoration on the floor in the center of the room. Yeah, keep the boss there. Because it just makes things so much easier to deal with his mechanics. If he's kept in the middle. And I'm not getting any loot today. Yeah, who would even design such an ornate floor? And how the hell did they get that thing in there so they had to just drive through a wall to get it out to attack us anyway? Oh well. Well, unfortunately, we can't walk up the center stairs. Because apparently we can walk through a flooded castle, but not a little bit of debris on the floor. Oh, I'm not getting anything today. Now, I've never taken a close look at these guys. Not that you can see much, because... Okay, so they're just, they're just regular. Just Dome and Imperial guys. They have different names, and I've just never taken a closer look at them to see if they are wearing the same Imperial uniforms, and yeah, it appears, yes, that is the case. And curiosity solved. That's my thing, apparently. Like, when I'm looking for things to comment on, it's like, yeah, you know what, I've never looked at this before. Somebody just leveled up. Oh, 
Aw, oh, nice! Finally, a new weapon for me! I mean, I feel like I just got one, but... As the fanfare music ruins the scene. <laughs> It's really a shame that this that intro is not voice acted. Oh, hi friends. I see we made it here together. I completely forgot they show up in this cutscene here. I mean, I wouldn't I would not have been disappointed if we didn't if they didn't. Um I know I've complained in praise the game as appropriate points for doing and not doing that. And, but in this case, even if they didn't show up, it would be entirely excusable because it was explicitly stated we're taking different paths through the castle here. And it would just be pretty easy for, you know, them to just get there while I'm dealing with this guy. So, yeah, he's back. And... Yeah, he's got some new toys, as he said. He's, uh, traded out for a chainsaw, and by the way, that attack is avoidable. Boom. But, uh, some, something seems off. Um, you're not... We go together! Crying about all your name days coming at once because you have a chance to kick my butt again? Dude, are you okay? I, I know you tried to kick my butt a few times, but I honestly got nothing personal against you. It's what put this is more of a one-sided grudge. Like, I, I it wasn't my intent to come here and kill you after all. You know, you're you're just in wrong place at wrong time. Die, die, die! Um, well, if that is your wish. That one, I accidentally just got a little too close to that, but that's alright. Trying not to clip the party, but we'll be okay. So apparently, Chainsaw also has machine gun attached to it. Um, a point for creativity, I suppose? Instead of gun blades, we have chainsaw guns. Interesting design choice. Dude, what did they do to you? Okay, I'm really sorry I had to come to this. Please tell me I can get that. Damn. Oh so yeah, he doesn't disappear. He just sits there. Now the part that I've been dreading since I began this series. Have you aught to say for yourself? For what you have done to our people? Your people? <laughs> I 
My people, he says. The precious lordling beloved by all come to confront the wicked witch. My parents taught me no better. They woke me from dawn to dust like an ox or an ass or some other beast of burden. Until, that is, my brother spied a chance to transform the family fortunes. And so I was married to a vicious old drunk who beat me as he pleased. And when I pleaded for help, I was told to grin and bear it. For the family, for him, for everyone's sake. They pretended not to notice, but they knew. They knew. What did it matter? I was nothing to them. Less than nothing. I wasn't of their flesh. I wasn't a fellow Doman. I wasn't even a person. I might just as well have been dead. And then my husband passed away one day. And so I was sold off yet again to pay his debts. But this time, this time, I found a way to live for myself, to survive as a spy for the Empire. Oh, those were the days when the scales first fell from my eyes. No longer would I be a slave to my parents or my husband or the Pleasure House. I would be free and receive due compensation. That would be enough, I thought. Until I saw a doorman in the road, beaten and broken. And my heart, my heart skipped a beat. Lying at my feet, groaning in agony, sobbing in despair, powerless, helpless, Hopeless, a vision forever seared into my soul. Oh. There was nothing I would not do to feel that joy again, to bend this cruel, twisted world to my whims. <sighs> now, having borne witness to my life's work, have you ought to say to me? <laughs> Twas kind of you to lend me your ear, my lord. But now it is time for us to conclude our little tete-a-tete -tete with a final game of chance. Who shall stand, and who shall fall? Let the die be cast. This was her plan from the first, to bring the keep down on our heads! Dang! I will remember your words. We must flee. Order our forces to withdraw. Let's be quick about it. You can see the balcony right there. Get out. You still can! I cannot hold it forever! No! We will not leave you behind! 
Do your duty! Deliver Lord Hien and the others to safety! Now! Forthwith! I shall manage on my own! Why is everyone standing around like a schmuck? Go! Kosetsu! No. No one leaves. Not you or anyone else. This old frame cannot bear. Go now, all of you. The day is won, and the morrow beckons. Nay, thank you for granting me new purpose and a measure of peace. Gosetsu. You never failed us. Not once. You served my father faithfully. And I'm a better man for your guidance. And the Doma we built together shall be better for it, too. Be proud, my friend. Be proud. I am Shun. More than you know. Gambling was never my vice. Oh, hey, Serena. How merciful the gods that I should find you in time. Kasetsu? We must turn back now before it is too late. Eyes forward, Serena. That was his wish. I will deliver you to safety. The others are waiting.
right. So, before we conclude this little side quest right here, we're actually going to do that the next episode because we have a lot to unpack with what we just saw. And first things first, the amount of idiot balls going around in that entire scene and it's all on our side. Keen-eyed viewers, of which I was one when I was very first doing this, will spot that the gun that is like three feet from Yatsuyu is in the first frame of the, of, of the pan of the room. You can see it on the floor there. And they are complete morons for not making sure she was completely disarmed. Really, really stupid of them. And they just sit around and let her expose it and don't restrain her, don't do anything. And then when the roof comes down and Gosetsu holds it up, everyone in the room just stands there, says their goodbyes, no, no, don't do it, no, don't do it. Like, they all talked about the night before that, yeah, sacrifices are going to be made and we might die upon the morrow and everything like that. And we all stand there like a schmuck while he's trying to completely save our butts. And sunlight is literally right around the corner. You can see the outside in several of those shots. It's not like we're trapped in that room and we, we might as well say our goodbyes or we have nothing better to do. No, you can clearly see there's an entryway open. Get the heck out of the room, you idiots. That put aside, this is a point of the game where I really loved Yatsuyu as a character. And I'm probably going to sound a little bit hypocritical for saying this, but I am extremely fond of her and I am also s quite a bit sympathetic to her. Now, we will be seeing more of it later, but one of the main themes of Stormblood is that you can be sympathetic to somebody's cause without being sympathetic to the actions they take as a result of it. She is probably the first and one of the biggest such a cases we are going to see of this. And if I may spare a personal anecdote here, back when Stormblood was not yet available to play but all the promo materials were out, Obviously, she had a profile on the main site, and I took one look at this woman, like, you knew she was the viceroy, the acting viceroy of Doma and everything like that, and you knew she was quite brutal, although not quite to the extent, until we actually see it in action. And I took one look at this woman, and I said, damn, I'm like, she is sleeping with every guard in the castle, and she is milking them for all they are worth. And I kind of reveled in, in, in this little headcanon here, and I meant it more in a kind of endearing way. Not, not to really quote-unquote slut shame, because, well, why woman, why should a woman ever feel ashamed of, you know, uh, that, that sort of thing? And I felt it more as an empowering on her, because if a woman is going to sleep with a bunch of guys and just milk them for just completely all their worth, and they they completely consent to that, that says more about their character than it does hers. You know, that, that you know, the, the lengths they will go to just to sleep with a pretty woman, for instance. And there's no reason that a woman who is completely consenting to a sexual relationship shouldn't be, I don't want to use the word proud, but there, she shouldn't ever feel ashamed of such a thing. If it's consensual and all the, th all the, the things that come with consent, there is no reason a woman should ever feel shame in this. And I meant it in that sort of way. How I kind of sort of predicted this, this part of her character without ever knowing it kind of astounds me. And knowing what she just told us, I was horrified. And I still am to this day, about two years later, absolutely horrified at how right I was, but for the completely just messed up reasons. Now, a lot of the people in the fandom uh, especially at, at this point, were really condemning of her. And not to say that all of it was completely unwarranted, because as we've, we've seen, she's, she's a complete monster. She is off her rocker, and she is a pretty psychopathic woman, and seriously in need of, of, of some help, and definitely not to, not to be in a position of power. But it's not without reason that she became that way, and that is what I am sympathetic to her. Now, a lot of people had read her little rant at the end of Doma Castle there to be her begging for mercy in the end. And 
No, it is explicitly spelled out in various sort of ways, if you are paying attention, that it is no such thing. She is spitting on Hian's face right there. Uh, if you remember, and we know she, we knew she's telling the truth because we saw in the flashback scene just how utterly cruel her adopted mother is to her just in a few short seconds and you can just see the despair on her face even as a young child. Also, it would be of note to mention that as soon as she's done her little speech, she picks up the gun and makes an attempt on Hien's life. And the Imperial officer from which we, we had the echo vision of her as a child, even he was telling us, no, you don't understand, she will burn it all down before she surrenders. She's not there to surrender. She's there to fight to her last and pr you know prove her point. And basically her point is that Doma sucks. Like their culture, it sucks. She led a miserable life, you know, being being married off and abused by her husband and possibly underage because it's heavily implied that that is the quote-unquote arrangement that her adopted mother may have been willing to set up for her. It's not explicitly stated if she was underage when all this happened, but it's it's very possible and very likely. So not only is she she emotionally abused, she's she was domestically abused, she was sexually abused, she was literally sold to a whorehouse, okay, to pay off her husband's debt as a piece of property. Like she said, it was like I wasn't even a person, like I didn't even exist. And the amount of just utter despair that this woman has put up with. And then finally, the Empire gives her basically a chance for her freedom. Basically is a spy for the Empire and just milks the resistance from all it's worth because the Empire gave her a better chance at life. The Empire actually educated her. They gave her a way out. And initially she thought it was enough until the one day where she sees another Dolman just suffering in the road and that's what seals the deal for her just to watch somebody else suffer the way she did and even though she begged and she pleaded no one did anything about it they were all complacent with it and that's what ultimate seeing that man ultimately seals the deal for her that you know what you know what? They will be made to kneel and grovel like I once was. Never again shall I, but they shall. For they complacency, they shall. And thus, she goes off onto the deep end. Now, I'm not going to sit here and excuse what she did, because indeed, she is a terrible, horrible person as a result of this, but it didn't come from nothing. It came from us in... It came from a society that just completely used and abused her and thought nothing of it. We saw earlier that when, you know, she kills some of the Red Kojin and, and she's like, no, no, there's no satisfaction in it because it is the Domans she hates. It's not everyone else. It's just the Domans. It's them who made her suffer and it's them she will be made to, to have suffer in her stead in return. And... There's, there's just something about that that just, especially, you know, like I said, given, given my own assumptions about her, just from, just from a few, just, just profile blurbs and just how horrified I was to make the assumptions I did and I was right, but just for completely messed up reasons that I did not see coming and to see another woman just be abused and, and ultimately sex trafficked like that and just have a society be completely complacent in that yeah i don't hopefully you guys can see why i'm i'm sympathetic to just how she dove into madness like that not not the action she took as a result of it like i said one of the themes of stormblood is you can be sympathetic to one's cause without being sympathetic to one's actions we've actually even seen this with the alamegan and the doman people just not to a different degree they want their freedom they don't want to suffer under the heel of the empire anymore but at the same time they have to choose their actions carefully. Like, they can be sympathetic to the fact that we want to liberate them, but there has to be sacrifices made in those actions in order to do it, and they may not feel like it's 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 worth it for them in the end. And it's, it's a lesser point in there, but again, I cannot drive home the point enough about what it is to be a, have a sympathetic backstory and be a sympathetic character. And Yatsuyu definitely falls into the former category. And 
it just pained me, absolutely just pained me, how, how much the fandom vilified her and yet woobified some of the other characters that we will get to later. And one thing of also note that I neglected to mention during during this, this aforementioned rant, just as, as further evidence that she is not begging for mercy in, in this little scene at the end of Doma Castle here, where in which case, you know, she ultimately loses, is remember when I asked you uh, a couple episodes back during her scene with where Xenos just absolutely just manhandles her. And her little bodyguard over there, you know, our not so memorable enemy over there, um, he expresses genuine concern for her well-being, calling it just completely uncalled for what Xenos did to her, is she responds by backhanding him across the room. The reason she does that is because, number one, she don't want your damn pity. Number two, he doesn't speak up until after Xenos has left. He waits until the threat is gone before he chooses to act or even speak a word about it. And it's that kind of complacency that she just has no freaking tolerance for. She is done, absolutely just done with the world, just done with the dolmens, and she was just gonna revel in every single moment that she can be made to let them suffer and to heal to her just the way that they did, uh, that, that she was forced to do to them. And there is just something just incredibly endearing and just powerful about that. And she was not a woman who was had a lot of, you know, power and strength herself. All she had basically was a gun and and bodyguards, but just the way she absolutely just carried herself, the way she just commanded herself and just her mere presence was enough to make a man crap their pants despite what you know, basically, she was, you know, she grew up as a farm girl. Here she is with all this power, and I can ultimately see how it would go to her head and, and just further drive her into madness, because now she just has these further means to it. And she's she's completely one of my favorite characters as a result, and while I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that her actions she took as a result of her abuse were appropriate, they definitely were not. She was a, she was obviously a victim, and it is terrible and horrible what she did to make others victims in her stead. But I do feel like at this point the fandom had unfairly vilified her more than she should have, more than she should have been, and that they didn't quite understand the implications of what happened in in that scene, and that she's not begging for mercy. She's absolutely not. She's she's telling you of the problems in this society, and if we're gonna liberate Doma, that's a pro that's th those are things that we need to take care of. Remember, Hien said, "I will remember your words," and hopefully he will. That take what she said to heart. You know that she didn't just didn't become a monster because she was born a monster. Doma literally made her that way, and it's just one of those just really sad just ultimately just sad sad stories that things just had to come to this and it's it's terrible and it's horrible and again i am not excusing what she did and her clearly blatant murder of innocent people who didn't do anything personal against her her their crime was just being doman i'm not going to i'm not going to shy against say that was messed up but it was also messed up what that society allowed to happen to her and i don't think that should be forgotten by people especially when you analyze her as a character do not forget she was once an innocent too and she was also a victim so that's going to be enough for this rant i have gone on long long enough about her and again she's she's one of my favorite characters and i will defend her quite a lot even even as i admit to her shortcomings and all that but that's going to be it for this episode, and we're going to have to talk to all our friends here later on to see the conclusion of what we have wrought in our invasion and ultimate destruction of Doma Castle. So thank you for watching, friends, and I shall see you then.